News First News Line with Faraz Shaukat Ali. And a very good evening to you and welcome to News Line Live. Uh, we're sorry, but we seem to be constantly starting late. A couple of minutes is a long time, uh, as much as a week is a long time in politics. Now, our guest this evening is a um, person who needs really no introduction, but he's been missing from, for so long uh, that I might as well introduce him. Uh, politician and uh, legal ego, Mr. Faisal Mustafa. Very good evening to you. Good Faisal. evening for us. And thank you very much for accepting my invitation, being on the program. Um, straight away, I'll ask you, um, as a member of the SLFP, uh, is it fair to say that the SLFP seems to have uh, um, sort of almost uh, divorced itself from the SLPP and that alliance? Well, I don't think you could say we are divorced ourselves because we are the constituent partner of the government. But are you? But what, what, what is um, uh, the uh, Mr. Vimal Vira once doing then, uh, getting involved in, uh, in matters uh, of the SLPP? He's having his own group. Is there a new group now? I wouldn't speak for Honorable Vimal Vira as yeah. for the Sri Lankan Freedom Party. Yeah. We are yet a constituent partner of the government. And uh, uh, do you believe, um, from your standpoint, that uh, the president must have a political say in his party? I think it's. I don't speak on behalf of other parties, Faraz. It's a yeah. matter for the SLP. No, no. From from the SLFP perspective. No, SLFP perspective, we speak only about the SLFP. Right. And from and the SLF, from the there? SLFP perspective, we don't deal with other political parties how they should be run. But you are, by your own admission, you're part of the. Um, we are part alliance. of. A, we are part of an alliance, but yeah. SLPP is a party on its own. So do you? Your you partners of the government. Would you? Would you like? Uh, the president. Well, so, what is your perspective? For us, uh, what I, is your I generally, I, as I said earlier, yeah. on principle, yeah. we only talk about our party and how our party should be run. Yeah. And the leadership of another party is a matter for their party. Are you comfortable with uh, the president not having a direct political say? I do. I think the SLP is a party of their own. I don't think there is no question of being me, me being comfortable or not. That's an independent decision. For matters and what the is SLFP. the SLFP viewpoint on the way the country is run? I mean, SLFP, SLF, SLFP is a part of the constituent of the government, yeah. and we are working with the, with the other political parties who are within the government to take, steer the country forward. Right. Do you think that the president is exercising uh, uh, the full powers uh, conferred upon him by, of course, I the mean, Amendment, and that he is leaving? The Prime Minister out of things? I don't think he's leaving the Prime Minister out. Is the out. Prime I Minister, then in that case, can I change the question? Yeah. Is the Prime Minister stymieing the efforts uh, of the President? I don't think, uh, firstly, they're brothers, and I think they have a very good but working relationship. But they're brothers in the family. Yeah, but, but I think there's a very good working relationship between the President and the Prime Minister. Is there a crack in the, in the familial uh, arrangement? I don't think so for us. You don't think so? I don't think so. Um, so everything else is speculation? I think so. I mean, I mean, I think the government is, I mean, there's a good relationship between the president and the prime you, minister. Uh, what, in, your, in, in politics, for us, there's always speculation. What's your perspective all, about Mr. Wiedewanser, um talking, out, let's say, out of turn, but talking nevertheless? I think Mr. Wiedewanser, uh, he represented a political party and he expressed cert certain sentiments. And always you see sentiments being expressed by various individuals. But Mr. Wiedewanser, supported the return of Mahindra Rajapaksa. I think he's yet supporting the return of Mahindra Rajapaksa and uh, so the should, President should, we, should, Rajapaksa. should everyone uh, sit up and take notice when Mr. Virawansa says that the President needs to be given a political say? I think, uh, I mean, that is his view. Right. So, yeah, I mean, he, he's entitled to express his view. I think that's, that starts there and ends there. Right. Well, uh, let's move on. Uh, the impending arrival of uh, the uh, wonderful all-round cricketer Imran Khan, uh, Imran Khan. Um, after several years of trying and trying he finally ended up uh, being the, pre uh, uh, the Prime Minister of Pakistan and so on um, and he's coming to Sri Lanka uh, apart, apart from the cricketing fans which would be the whole of the country uh, being rather excited about his arrival um, as a member of the uh, Muslim community do you see his visit here as a, as a show of support to the community? 
I think he's, he's support to Sri Lanka. Why are you looking at it? From, he he is he is extending his support to Sri Lanka. Right. I mean, firstly, I am a Sri Lankan before I am. I represent any particular ethnicity. That's good. I'm glad you're saying That's that. That's how I look at it. That's things. the way we need to be. I think so, Francis. But how do you then view this whole issue about the burial? Because obviously, uh, as members of the um, Muslim community, uh, whatever said and done, we would like to see that. Uh, what's your perspective? For us, I always say, at this with COVID-19, yeah. I don't fear dying, but I fear dying in Sri Lanka. Yeah. So the Sri Lankan Muslim community, yeah is looking at empathy towards the decision of forced cremation being changed. Yeah. So we are hopeful. We have gone to the Supreme Court. There was a by majority decision. Uh, it was rejected. Then I recently went on behalf of 26 year. Don't 26 you view that as being uh, that the powers that be, the government of the day, making life difficult for the community? No, I think the, the community is looking at empathy. If there is no scientific, so they don't seem to be there is no any scientific basis for preventing burial. Right. I think... Uh, so the, why, why the did Mahindra Rajapaksa say what he did and not follow it up with the... I mean, Mahindra Rajapaksa, Mahindra Rajapaksa is a leader with a lot, lot of empathy. Yeah. So he, 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 he felt that the burial should be given. But then all he had to do was tell his secretary to uh, figure out a gazette notification. So for whatever reason, it was not done. Yeah. Right? And the community is very hurt about that for us. Are you annoyed that um, some members of the... Um, Muslim community of different uh, various political parties all banded together and supported the government on the 20th amendment? No, for us, I think these Muslim parties, yeah. they could have gone to the government yeah. and made an appeal that we will support the 20th amendment, give us burial. Yeah. Without doing that, the two chiefs sat on one side, the Red Indian sat on the other. In short, so that gives very bad taste. Of course. And isn't, there, isn't it also fair to say that uh, these minority parties are always cherry picking for their partisan benefit and maybe for their personal benefit. No, I think it gives bad taste to, as, as a community, right? You should be honest in your dealings. You want to support something, as a party you support it. And it was a very good opportunity for both these leaders to appeal to the government because for the Muslim community, the burial issue is bigger than the 20th Amendment. And Imran Khan made a uh, uh, he sent a message saying that he was very pleased. So I think and so every on. Muslim, every Muslim country, every Muslim around the world is hoping, praying, and is begging of empathy from the Sri Lankan government to give us the burial right. So the kingdom of uh, the royal kingdom of Saudi Arabia has made their displeasure rather evident. They've not uh, accepted the nomination of the um, uh, of an ambassador to the to the kingdom. I and think that's just on hold. I think uh, it is. It can't be coincidence. I think I don't know about. I don't know about it. I mean, why it's being held up? But what I could say one thing: the Muslim world is very saddened by the decision hmm. of forced cremation because in our faith, yeah. burial is mandatory. And you are hopeful that there, there will be some uh, sense come out of all this? I mean, all what the Muslim cam community in Sri Lanka can do is hope. And we, and we believe that continuously we ask, we are requesting that there is empathy towards changing the decision of forced, forced cremation. And um, let's, um, let's, um, let's take it uh, somewhere else. Um, the East container terminal matter and the fuel tanks. Mm -hmm. India is in the midst of all this. Now we have sort of various statements here and there to say that we'll take the, uh, uh, take the, the um, fuel tanks back uh, and we would handle it. But Faisal, as a lawyer, a legal man, you'll know that the, the arrangement was the 30 three-year lease on those uh, on that facility given way back in 2002 when Ranil Wickremesinghe was the short-lived prime minister in that uh, admin. So, you know, 33 plus 2 is 35. We're only in 2021. There's another, approximately another 14 years to run. Okay, say 12 to 14. How can you go and get it back unless the other side is just giving it? 
for us, I have not studied the legal binding agreement. Right. But I also don't think that the cabinet has taken a decision to rescind that uh, agreement per se. Right. I think various sentiments was expressed by the minister in concern. That was only re reported in the media. Yeah. But I don't think the cabinet has taken a decision to rescind it. Right. So I think we have to give weight only if cabinet has taken a decision to rescind it. Right. Otherwise... Uh, I think otherwise it's just speculation. It is us. speculation. All right. And what about the ECT? E e I think... The government and Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa took a decision that offering the West Terminal instead of the East should be done and that we should protect the East Terminal and but, that was done. But a few days before that, Mr. Mustafa, the President of our country, uh, complete with tw uh, 20th Amendment on his side, was in Kalutara and he said that, you know, we must honour these foreign agreements. So maybe there would have been a consultative process within the government and they decided that the West Terminal should be offered instead of the East. I mean, decisions change. Governments take decisions in numerous occasions. You have but seen... You'd imagine, you, you said they're brothers and so on. Uh, you'd imagine that uh, they wouldn't have very public uh, differences. Like I don't that. think it's a public difference. I think at the, at the end of it, yeah. the offer was to give the West Terminal instead of the East. So I don't, I, I mean, there was a collective decision at the end of it, various sentiments were expressed for us, yeah. but at the end of it, unanimously, it was decided to offer the West instead of the East. Now then, um, you, can I ask you, um, I know that you are not a member of parliament, uh, member of parliament now, but what's your uh, take? Here we have um, the availability of 250,000 uh, uh, vaccines because uh, originally when India gave us 500,000, mm. we were expecting to use both doses within two mm. weeks or three weeks. Now they're saying, look, you can wait uh, for best results 12 weeks. So therefore, they're using the other 250,000. But they seem to be having some confusion. First of all, they said this, this is available to the public. Then they said, well, you know, actually, uh, it's going to be for people with underlying problems and so on. Now they said, well, actually, it's going to be between 30 and 60 because the most infected are there in that group. Um, but Sudarshini, uh, the, the state minister, says, well, actually, you know, um, if we do that, we'll fall foul of the WHO arrangements. And so we must actually stick to that original thing, which was that over 60s and with uh, underlying health problems will have priority. Why are all these mixed signals and so on? I mean, at the end of the day, citizens of Sri Lanka are given the vaccine. So, I mean, various view, views, various formulas on how it should be given could be expressed. But I don't think there are big issues for us to make a hue and cry about. Really? At the end of the day, the, the, I mean, there are due, 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 various views being expressed. Have you had your The vaccine? most most vulnerable, yeah. some would consider. Some would think the most exposed. Yeah. So, at the end of the day, I mean, if different countries would take different decisions, but I don't think it's a big issue for us to just... Swing one roundabout? No, I don't think it's... A, I mean, end of the day, it's all done bona fide in good faith. Yeah. If you give the elderly or if you give the, uh, the ones between 30 or 60, it's a, you have to opt for one. Yeah. So, I don't think it's a big issue which we should make a noise, big, big noise about. You seem to take it very laid back. I, I, have you got your... Vaccine? I haven't, for us. No. Are you looking forward to getting it? I mean, when I'm entitled to it, yes, I'm not a member of parliament. Right? Right. Neither, I mean, I'll so speak... You're, uh, you're merely, merely a citizen of Sri Lanka. I am a citizen of Sri Lanka. Yes. So I wait my turn and when, I, when it's offered to me, I'll take it. Would it be too much to ask how old you are? I'm um, 52. 52. Okay. All right. On that note, uh, Faisal Mustafa, as always, uh, up front and open. Uh, but now it's time to listen to the headlines and find out what's in store uh, with the uh, prime time news this evening. We'll see you on the other side of this short message. News first, Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. And welcome back to Newsline Live. I'm in conversation with uh, Mr. Faiza Mustafa, former minister, still very much a legal eagle. Uh, Mr. Mustafa, we, we spoke and there's many messages coming in about, um, about this question, which is, within an ambience where Sri Lanka is looking for reconciliation and unity and a, uh, and a real one nation, one Sri Lanka and so on, um, is there space 
for especially sort of minority parties. Why should we have minority parties? For us, firstly, why did you have parties re re uh, representing a certain ethnicity? Yeah. Originally started in the north, where national parties failed there. Then in the east also, the grievances of the people in the north and the east. Yeah. The national parties failed to address them. And thereby, you had minority parties. But you, but you, you know, when you said about the north, uh, for example, um, the almost all the uh, most the top hierarchy, let's say, of uh, Tamil politicians were murdered uh, by the LTTE. Now we have a situation where the uh, the so-called um, the uh, voice of the Tamil people, which is uh, hotly disputed by some, uh, the TNA, they want to celebrate Heroes' Day, to celebrate their combatants who have died, all right? And yet, they, they want uh, their living combatants, former combatants, like uh, Karuna and Pillayan, they want them prosecuted. Uh, I see uh, that as being mischievous or being lopsided. And as when you come to this whole issue of minority parties, certainly the, the Muslim parties, um, they seem to have acted so far for their own personal and partisan benefit, not in for the benefit of their community. I've had politicians here of the Muslim faith, of those parties, and I've asked them to name five things which they've done in their lifetime for the benefit from their political lifetime, for the benefit of their community, nobody can answer the question. For us, let Mr. Ashraf be the luck for the community. Yeah. But if you take the recent so past... So there you go. So we, we are just living in reflected yeah, glory. But if you take the present situation, yeah. most Muslim parties, they have joined governments and taken perks and position. Yeah. And thereby, they are vision towards the community has got blurred. If they but I would say one. the Tamil parties, they have stayed in opposition yeah. and sometimes they have achieved much more than the Muslim parties joining governments and trying to raise concerns of our community. So I believe that in the North and the East, mm. even if you like it or not, regional parties have more support than national parties. And also for us, if you take the voter today, majority of the voter votes for his ethnicity. So if you like it or not, whoever, general, generally the voter votes for a person from his ethnicity. So the mind of the voter also yes. creates this situation for us. How do you change the trajectory? I mean, we have to think about a Sri Lankan identity. We always, there's a lot of lip service with regard to that. Yeah. There has to be empathy, compassion, and we should actually be treated as brothers. And we should, there should be a cultural and social exchange between communities and religions. Because most of the time, people misunderstand each other. Especially, I would always say a Muslim covering a head or wearing, a, or a, a Muslim man wearing a beard and a cap. Yeah. That should that he's not radical. He's not a racist. He he is practicing his religion. But sometimes he's misunderstood to say, to say that he's an extremist because he's professing his his faith in the manner he wants to. Right. Well, there's nothing wrong in having a beard. In I don't. I don't think so. Right. And also, as, 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 much as, as much as a woman can wear a short skirt, yeah. a woman can cover herself. I mean, long as there is no threat to security concern, I mean, both should be respected. Not only security, there's, uh, uh, there's other norms. Yeah, other norms as well. Yeah. I, mean, other than, I don't know, what, what, are, what do you mean by other norms? What well, I mean, uh, you know, we don't, uh, our, our nation, as a nation, we... Uh, are conservative. We mm -hmm. uh, we've certainly project that uh, through uh, uh, the different religions in this country. And so for us, I believe uni unity through diversity. Yeah, that's the only way for, for forward. But how do you stop this horse trading of these uh, minority parties? I mean, I think in the recent past, the Muslim voter has also got you, educated. You just alluded to that before. You know yeah. where the. The, the chiefs were on the one side and they sent the, uh, the I mean, little Indians here and I there. mean, I'm sure the community has taken serious note of that. Right. Because all what they have been speaking in the political platform yeah. is how much they want to do for their community. Yeah. Um, 
do you agree with the one country, one law theory? For us, each country, each community has their personal laws. Yeah. And like how I said earlier, for us, only with regard to our personal laws, each community, each, uh, there, are, there, there are personal laws for the Muslims, there are personal laws for our country, uh, Sinhalese, for the Tesalalami law. So unity through diversity can be achieved. Mm. So, I mean, I don't think any of these personal laws are an impediment to national reconciliation or national harmony. Then, then, um, uh, one of our viewers is saying that you are inconsistent, that uh, you first said that you are first Sri Lankan and then Muslim, but later, talking about the burial issue, you say that that is central to Muslims. For us, Sri, La Sri Lankan law, until COVID, mm -hmm. accepted burial and cremation as a part of this, uh, the manner in which a body should be disposed of. Indeed. That's a right which has been, which, which has, which all communities had in this country. Either you can bury and, uh, or you can cremate. So when you take burial uh, out, right, it's discrimination. Somebody so that's, that, that is, that, that is not, not being a Sri Lankan. There are several messages to say nearly the same thing, which is that You've been very close to uh, the former president and current prime minister, Mahindra Rajapaksa. Yes, you enjoy a certain rapport with him, which is undeniable and it's evident in public meetings and so on. Uh, here's a lot of time for you. Why can't you represent the interests of the Muslim community, asks the question, and get uh, Mahindra Rajapaksa's response to the burial issue gazetted? Faraz, I have done everything possible even though I'm not in Parliament, I ended up going to the Supreme Court. I w I've also recently, where, where a body is in the mortuary asking for a second PCR test. Yeah. First, firstly, we asked for a right of burial, but also we said, because with regard to the PCR test for us, there are issues about how accurate it is. So we requested from the health authorities, give us an opportunity of a second PCR of a, of a COVID positive body mm. so that if it is if there is a discrepancy and, and it shows negative in the second report we could bury it. Are you uh, contemplating any um, lobbying uh, or appeals lobbying if you like uh, to the uh, Muslim, other Muslim nations to uh, to sort of uh, uh, ask the Sri Lankan so government? I think most Muslim nations have asked Sri Lanka there is no need lobbying which is needed. I mean, this anyway. is, I mean, Muslims are bound by faith. Yeah. And all over the world, Muslim countries have expressed their concern and has asked the Sri Lankan government to please give them give the right to bury. With your closeness um, to the uh, former president, current prime minister, Manaraj Paksa, why uh, would you say uh, that you've been sort of left out? No, I mean, in politics, for us, there are times when you are in parliament, when you are not, when you are not in parliament. Yeah. So I would say that I'm left out. I, I'm not in parliament for this term, but that is not my end of my political life. Meaning that you're going, you will make it. I mean, I'm continuously with the people, and I think, I mean, being in, being in par, being not in parliament would not stop me from continuing my political Where, journey. Where's the fun? Is the fun in at Halstorf or is? The fun at uh, I mean, parliament. at the moment for me, the fun fun has always been in Halstorf for me. Right. And I mean, I le I enjoy my legal profession. Yeah. I'm, I practice over 25 years. Yeah. It's very intellectually stimulating yeah. because every case is something new. Are you and suggesting that the other 224 people in parliament are not intellectually stimulated? No, I'm, I mean, stimulated. if I say that it will be Sagret, I said, I mean, e e both forums are equally interesting. Right. But at this moment, I'm spending time in this forum only. Yeah. And I'm I find it very stimulating for us. Are you happy overall with the, um, uh, the way this government is going? I'm, I mean, there are any government for us, there is issue. Yeah. I'm hopeful that it will do better. But, but let's see. I'm, I'm, I mean, every government has had issues. We're having, we having the COVID issue at this point of time. Yeah. I hope that we have a speedy recovery and there will be prosperity for our people. Mm -hmm. And um, when do you think you'll be making a um, comeback? I mean... After these five years, for, for us, definitely, I, I'm continuously engaged myself in politics. Yeah. So I do, I'm, I'm, I'm a politician, but uh, I'm not in parliament. Are they considering a uh, diplomatic posting for you? No, I'm not interested. I, I'm not interested in any uh, post. My question is, are they 
considering. For us, I'm not interested in any disturbance. I don't think so. But now you, have anyway, you heard uh, whether they are considering? No, I, I haven't heard. Have and they I, asked you? I'm sure they know that I'm not interested either for us. But, uh, have, why? Have they would ask me that? because for me, a, a diplomatic posting will never stimulate me for us. And I don't think I'll be a good diplomat. What better stimulus than representing our mm, country no, for us. in places like uh, the, the United Nations, and so on. For us, I've been a politician, I've been a cabinet minister. Yes. I, I enjoy that and I enjoy my legal profession. But with all your legal profession articulating different points. For us, I think, I think, uh, I won't say rest, diplomatic assignments are rest and recreation, but I would say for me, it's a no. It's a no. So, but you will make, be making a comeback. I hope, I'm hopeful of that for us. Okay. Well, you know, Faisal Mustafa, thank you very much for being on Newsline Live. It's always a pleasure being with you, Farah. It's been wonderful having you here. And now, of course, it's time for the primetime news from News First. Take care. Have a wonderful weekend ahead of you. Stay safe and God bless you.